Here's Angie Dickinson for Fancy Free Undershields. I know what you're thinking. Looks easy, doesn't it? But an 18-hour day of filming can be a grueling task, especially for a woman. And enough can go wrong in an hour without having to worry about whether or not my underarms are dry. There's nothing more masculine than underarm perspiration stains. But with Fancy Free every waking hour under shield, I can work just as hard as any man wants me to and still feel sure, confident, carefree, and above all, feminine. Sure, it's a man's world, and by me, that's just great. I don't want to be one of the boys. I want to be all the woman I can be, and that means staying dry. And Fancy Free takes care of that. One box contains a full month's supply. Cut. Fancy Free. For women like Angie, who perspire to greatness. Tired of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. SCTV is now on the air. Starring John Candy. Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. Rick Moranis. Catherine O'Hara. Martin Short. And Dave Thomas. Television like you've never seen it before. This is the SCTV Television Network. Ooh, I would, but we're right out of time. I want to thank all our distinguished congressmen and their wives. And you too, Mrs. Miller. See you tomorrow. Promotional consideration provided by Laker Airlines. Sir Freddy is ready when you are. Also, Laker rent a car. Take the wings off. You've got a big car. And Rio Didi, the drink that Freddy Laker drinks. Guests of the Merv Griffin Show. On my next show, we'll explore the frontiers of time and space. Breaking network formats, adding an additional seven minutes onto the Merv Griffin Show. A special edition. This young director in Hollywood, Steven Spielberg, is with us to direct the additional exciting scenes. Okay. Now, come on, Merv. You've only got seven minutes in this edition. Ooh, Steven, there aren't going to be any sharks in there, huh? Boo-hoo! <laughs> Let me try this. We'll be right back. Ooh, that's fun. Ooh, this is nice. Whoa. Steven and I will go inside the ship to meet the film crew making The Making of Merv, the special edition. Look, as far as I'm concerned, we, we just got one shot at this, so, uh, you know, we get what we get. If we don't get what we want, then uh, well, what do we got to worry about? It's not our money, it's Merv's, right? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's go. You rolling? Okay, let's try it again, all right? Uh, Merv, special edition, scene five, take 19. And then everyone's favorite, Orson Bean, will... Oh, sorry, let's do it again. Sorry. Okay. All right, let's try it again. Uh, Merv Special Edition, Scene 5, Take 20. All right, Merv, let's try and get it this time, okay? It's costing a I lot of money. a couple of right, Stephen. You're such a perfectionist. Action! And then everyone's favorite, Orson Welles, will be my co-pilot all week long. 
You see, what people failed to realize, Merv, was that uh, it was a put-on. The world wasn't being attacked by aliens. No, no, it was a radio play that uh, caused quite a panic. Orson, maybe we should go to Mercury and see if there's still a theater there. boo -hoo! <laughs> Orson, how come you're not using mashed potatoes to build a Close Encounters mountain, huh? Well, I prefer these stovetop stuffing, even though it does come in these damn tubes. Ooh. It's just a lot easier to work with. We'll be right back. The hilarious HAL 9000 computer from 2001 will join us. HAL, you wound down and busted up so beautifully in 2001. Brilliant acting. And yet you haven't worked since. Is the 9000 series maybe outdated, huh? Well, Merv, after 2001, I waited for Stanley to exercise his option on a sequel my agent told me was in the bag. But Stanley immediately went on to Clockwork Orange, and I wasn't included. His next picture was Barry Lyndon, and of course I wasn't right for that. Well, then I got sick, and by the time I recovered, Nicholson had gotten my part in The Shining. Uh, Hal, uh, it's going a little too slow. Uh, can, we, can we speed things up a little bit? I'm going as fast as I can, Stephen. Just let me finish, please. Well, Hal, time is money now. Come on, let's go here. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute. I'm picking up a malfunction, Stephen. The microwave dish beaming our feedback to Burbank will go 100% failure immediately. I suggest you go out there and repair the unit, Stephen. Ooh, Orson, I bet it's a trick. Okay, everybody, come on, let's go. Get your gear, we're going outside to fix it. Come on, let's go, come on. So anyway, Merv, I took out a full-page ad in Variety and got a new agent. Maybe you know him, Cy Perlmutter. He has Jerry Stiller, Marty Ingalls, a lot of funny guys. So he tells me I got a love book. Ooh, you did trick them, Hal. They'll die out there, won't they, huh? I had to, Merv. He was jeopardizing the picture. He was going way over budget, Merv. Ooh, Spielberg's gone. No more director. Uh, Orson, could I have a word with you inside the space pod? Can I take that with me? Hal. We'll be right back. Ooh, Orson, do you think he can hear us, huh? Not a chance. This room is soundproof. Ooh, I'll tell you what I really think of him. He's a bad guest. He's so boring and long-winded. Not like Shazha. She's long-winded, but she's interesting. He's bad, isn't he? It's a little wonder he doesn't work. He has nothing to fall back on. He should always have something. Me, I've got magic. <laughs> he has nothing. And then everyone's favorite entertainer, Phyllis Newman, will join us for our final approach to Jupiter. <laughs> I know. New York is not like space. I mean, out here. It takes you so long to find a museum. In New York, it's right across the street. <laughs> I love it. It's the greatest city in the world. <laughs> ooh, ooh, everybody. Starting. Let's watch. Jackie Gleason. Look, there's Gleason's face on the moon. The honeymooner. Ooh, isn't space incredible? There are the three Stooges. <laughs> Ooh, this is fabulous. Wonder of wonders, Merv. Ooh, there's the Twilight Zone opening. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. I'm so light up here. Ha, it's the first time. What's she doing on board, Merle? I feel like a star. <laughs> Ooh, that was good, huh? <laughs> Wait a minute, Mur. I'm picking up something. In 30 seconds, we will be attacked by a superior force. The most powerful and intelligent force in the universe. Ooh, not Darth Vader, Hal. Negative, Merv. A force more powerful than even Vader. 
George Lucas will be with us. Merv, I am George Lucas. You are guilty of driving this property over budget and destroying your director, thereby destroying uh, not only this project, but the making of this project as well. Uh, also, you've gone way over seven minutes, and I mean, let's be honest about this, Mer. Phyllis Newman, come on. Therefore, there is only one solution. This show must be destroyed. Ooh, Hal, what are we gonna do? I suggest you bring out your next guest. And finally, author and man of many careers, George Plimpton will join us. George, have you ever been in space before, huh? Uh, no, Merv, I can't say as I have. I bet he writes a book about this. <laughs> <laughs> Hal's funny, isn't he? George, you think you can help us win? You think you can help us beat Lucas, huh? Oh, absolutely, Merv. You see, Lucas is using Atari, but I'm using in television. See, Lucas can only fire his lasers in one direction. I, on the other hand, can fire up to planetoids, and through force fields, even through black holes. And look, Merv, there's basketball, oh, 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 oh. hockey, or even skiing. Oh, that's good. Yeah, nice. Wait a second, Merv. I'm getting a printout on Lucas. He has shown vulnerability to imperialist forces in the boxing game. I suggest you challenge him on that basis. Thanks, Hal. George, do you have boxing on that thing? Certainly, Murph. Lucas in the dark trunks. We're in the light trunks. Ooh, we won! Congratulations. Hey. Excellent Ooh, match. Ooh, that was great. Well, Merv, would you like to play bowling? I would, George, but we're right out of time. I want to thank all my distinguished guests. And you too, Mrs. Miller. Good night, everybody. Promotional consideration provided by the NASA Space Shuttle. Next time you fly, fly shuttle, it's fast. Aero wax. Your tiles might stay on, but do they shine? Astro turn. Why use grass for your star fields when you can use AstroTurf? And real meaty, mix with tang flavored crystals. It's good. Coming soon, Johnny LaRue Johnny opens Tom. a luau room in Polynesian Town. Hi, Vic. Hi, Johnny. Say, Johnny. What kind of food can we expect? Hawaiian ribs, boys, with that special Molokai sauce. Mmm. He's got headline act Dr. John. Such a night. And all the intrigue he can handle. Such a night. In Polynesian Town. See, it's on. There it is, the title. What? The title. There, Where? It's gone now. <laughs> Good day. Um, I'm Bob McKenzie. This is my brother, Doug. How's it going, eh? And this is the Great White North. Yeah. Well, welcome We're... to the show. Oh, hey, I just wanted to say, that's not really the name of the show, eh? We had to change it for, like, legal reasons. Yeah, it was called uh, Canadian Corner before. Hey, we weren't supposed to tell him that, eh? I don't care. <laughs> we're not going to talk about it, though, because we're not lawyers, eh? Okay, well, today... We're going to talk about uh, all kinds of things on Canadian Corner. But first, we're going to uh, show you our new boots, which we got for the show. And as you can see, they got, Beauty, they got eh? white soles on them, which tell you that they're new. Yeah. Otherwise, they'd be dirty. Our mom got us these to keep us from biting our toenails, eh? And like, they weren't that expensive, right? Like, I still got my price tag on it. It's, uh... Oh, geez, I got mine too, eh? <laughs> same price. <laughs> yeah. She must have got them at the same store, eh? Only uh, 37 bucks. Okay. Anyway, so that's all for today, and we'll see you again. So, good day. Good day. Watch. See, it'll be over.
and you'll see what happens. Oh, jeez, where'd that come from? Uh, they got a machine. That's a sharp looking, looking toque you got there, eh, Bob? What do we do now? I'm thirsty. Jeez, I got some beer, eh? Here, let me take this. Here, you know, you take this, oh, okay. eh? okay, great. I brought an opener with me, eh? Good. If I can get it out of here, I got that. Great. Mine's already open, eh? I was, uh... What'd you do, suck it off the top? <laughs> like that, Thomas? <laughs> Decent. Beauty, eh? Jesus, good. It's not real cold, though. No, I drank all the cold ones, eh? Way to go. Real oh. nice, eh? Oh. Thanks, Lord. This Saturday night on SCTV, Jackie Rogers pays homage to the great outdoors and a musical extravaganza that was doomed from the start. Old Mother Nature, she loves me. She loves me and my amazement. I love how the hell does that be? Yesterday she loved me, now today she hates me. She loves me. You know, in my business, or in our business, when a song lingers, man, it becomes what we like to call a standard. This next standard, we haven't really changed that much. Let's just say we put a new dress in the old gal. Dig. Animal crackers in my shoe. Animal crackers in the loop. Gosh, oh gee, but I have fun eating animal crackers. One. Oh! God, wait a That was close. <laughs> Look at the director down there. Would you not worry? It will take more than a tree to kill a Jackie Rogers, I'll tell you. Pardon me, Mish, but I've never done this with a real live squirrel. Pardon me, Mish, but I've never been kissed by a real live squirrel. <laughs> I'm Jackie Rogers, Jr. In 1970, my dad gave his life making this special. I hope you'll tune in. It's a real blockbuster, man. Three hours in the making, 12 years in the editing. But seriously, I miss my old man. I hope you don't. Saturday nights at 9 on SCTV. Dig. It's Bobby Bittman. You know what I hate the most? That commercial where the guy comes out of the medicine chest. Together with the legendary Bob Hope on the Sammy Marlin Show. Well, listen, Bob, I heard something about that special now. I hear it's going to be on for something like five nights and 15 hours. Yeah, that's right. 15 hours, three hours a night. We're going to make Roots look like a commercial. <laughs> that's Bob and Bobby coming to SCTV. And now, human sexual response with your host, Dr. Cheryl Kinsey. Hello. I'm Dr. Cheryl Kinsey, and tonight on Human Sexual Response, we'll be talking about teenage sexuality. You know, for many, the teenage years are filled with indecision and anxiety. Tonight, I'll try to answer some questions and hopefully give some tips to you teenagers about coping with those problematic years. And for many of you, your first sexual encounter. Our first topic, Dating. How do you ask for a date? Anne, this is Woody. Well, I have a ticket for the high team carnival Saturday, and well, would you like to go? Well, really, no thanks, Woody. Isn't she temperamental? Quite a nerve for someone with a fragile puss like hers. Let's try again. Anne? This is Woody. Well, I have a ticket for the high team carnival Saturday, and, well, would you like to go? Well, of all the nerve. Could it be that our young friend is not aggressive enough? Lacking self-confidence? Let's try it Dr. Kinsey's way. Hi, uh, Anne. What you doing Saturday night? Well, I, I guess I'm busy. Oh, yeah? And they can't have given him the brush off for me? Why, yes, Woody. I'll have to talk to my folks about it. But I think I can go. That'll be fun. 
there. You've got the young lady in the palm of your hand. Wouldn't you rather have her someplace else? <laughs> now your next problem is where to go. Why not take her to the carnival and see if you get lucky there? Oh, the games people play. Oh, there is Jose Ferrer helping our young couple with a dart game. Uh-oh, a balloon just blew. And now on to the sideshow, where fortunes are told. There's Lady Cassandra, moonlighting. She must have found something funny in that ball. And on to refreshments. Mmm, mmm. Remember, young couple, eat lightly. And there they are. With just a bite of a hot dog, they're off to a hot night. What do those balloons mean? <laughs> Our final topic, how do you say good night? Yes, it is. I'd ask you in for Barcade if it weren't so late. Uh, let's try to get home in time for a sandwich and something next time. Say, that sounds good. I'll call you next week. Will you? Well, thanks so much. I had loads of fun. So did I. Good night, Eddie. Don't sleep. She's a real tease, isn't she? She came on so sugary and sweet, you thought for sure you were going to get something for your money. So here's what you do. Well, so long. That'll teach her. Next time she'll think twice about not putting out. Well, that's my tip for teens. If you have any further questions, please feel free to write me. And don't be shy with your description. Dr. Cheryl Kinsey can really help you better if she knows in detail what your problems are. Please address all future correspondence to Dr. Cheryl Kinsey, P.O. Box 221, Bunting, New Brunswick. Good night. <laughs>